I've got Romeo here and I'm going to do a session. I'm going to go back in, I'm going to do another ulcer check to show you what he looks like after two weeks of treatment. And I'm also going to go through a little bit of a training session with you and show you uh, our pressure system from one to 10 and also to starting to do a little bit of body control work because before I get on his back, I want to have that body control on the ground. So we're talking about moving the hind quarters, moving the, the forehand, and getting him able to, to isolate his front end and flex left and right with his neck. And probably do a little bit of rain back, but we'll see how we go. So what I'll do is I'll stand him side on here. And I'm going to use the pads of my fingers like I did in the previous video, pushing in behind his elbow, running all the way back. into his flanks. Now the little tickles he did just there is very normal, it's, it's quite a ticklish area, but you didn't get any of that abdominal tightening or the cow kicking. I can't remember if he cow kicked, but he was cow kicking when I'd pressed him in the past. Um, so he's so much happier in his gut. So he will stay on that for the 28 day program. But yeah, feeling awesome and very relaxed in his body, feeling very soft and lovely and his demeanor is really good. So we use a pressure system of one to 10. And basically what that is, is one is the least amount of pressure possible, 10 is the most amount of pressure. And one is usually the lift of our energy. So it's at the raise in our intention. Two is a cue, three is a little bit more pressure and then we work the way up the system. And we find that this creates really light, responsive animals. We always start at one, we slowly build up until we get a positive reaction from the horse. So if he presents with a pressure of four, I will match him with a pressure of four until he gives me a positive reaction. And then my energy will drop back down to zero. Now, if he presented with a pressure of four and I came in with a pressure of two, so let's say a pressure of four was, he was kind of walking over me a little bit and my pressure of two was please don't do that and I kind of just don't really get a reaction from him, what happens is I start to dull him down and desensitize him and I encourage him to be very heavy and, and uh, to the aids. Now if he's presenting with a pressure of four and trying to walk over top of me and I come in with a pressure of eight and give him a massive big telling off, now he's going to be really sensitized and reactive and I'm going to have a really uh, Sharp, too sharp of an animal that's always worried about what I'm doing. So we always start with one, we go to two, to three, to four, and the moment we hit a, that, that change in their body language where I can tell that they're thinking about what I'm asking and they're trying to figure out what I'm doing, I just stay at that pressure till they answer it and then I go back down and give them a little bit of a break. So when we talk about body control it's the isolation of different parts of their body and it, it carries on through to when I'm on their back. So what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to flex his head left, then I'm going to go around the other side and flex his head right. And this of course is, comes in very handy when we're doing turns um, on their back and the beginnings of the turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, etc. So I don't want to pull his head around. So you can mistake me for, mistake the sort of thing and drag him around, but he's only doing it because it's uncomfortable. I want to educate him and show him what I want. So all I do with a nice open hand, I put the rope here and, I, and then this hand here controls the length of it. So I can slide it in, slide it out and I just quietly, good boy. Now I would say I had about a pressure two there. So I started to pick up the weight. I hadn't actually removed all the slack out of the uh, rope but he came round really nice and light. Had he have ignored that, I would have quietly tightened my fist on the rope and just quietly brought the rope back and put more weight in my hands until my pressure 10 was quite a firm hold. So here, I'm gonna hold, good. So there I got to about a pressure two or a three and he, I can feel his body language start changing. So I knew he was going to answer it, good boy. And so then I just stay on that pressure until he softens around. And if he didn't answer after a few seconds, I might try one more pressure bar. So here, my one is there. So that was a one, except that he didn't finish it. So here, beautiful, good. So now that I've got him flexing left and right, 
I'm going to flex them down. And this is all the same foundational work that I do with my break-ins as well. And, it's, and so by doing it on the ground, one, it gives me a lot of control when I'm tying them up, going through gateways, etc. But two, it prepares them for the ridden work. So I'm going to ask him to soften his head down. Good boy. The moment he's done it, I reward. So my hand holds it like this, and then I just quietly hold the buckle. I put a little bit of weight in my hand, and he drops. So I would say he's dropping at about a pressure two. So pressure one would be that as I close my hand, he would already be coming down. So there I'm at a pressure four, pressure five, pressure, and I can feel him answering it there. So I'm gonna stay, pressure five. Beautiful. Good, reward him. We're gonna go again. So I'm at pressure two, three. I can feel him answering it because he's starting to soften through his neck. I'm just going to hold there at that pressure until he, good boy, because he was just sitting out on the end of the rope. Now what I'm going to do is ask for the rain back. So I'm going to ask him to soften down if he ignores me. Good. That was about a pressure four. I'm going to ask for the rain back. Good job. So then I'm going to tighten my hold. Good. So there I got to about a pressure four. Lovely. That, those last two steps were at a pressure one. Good. I'm going to come here. He's just leaning on there, so I had to move up the pressure a little bit. But do you see how when he finally takes that step, or even before he takes the step, my hand opens as the reward. So what I wouldn't want to do is say, back up, push him back, and then keep holding him here. And this is a very, sorry Billy, this is a very common thing I see. Um, so let's say I'm, I'm watching a rider ask their horse on the bit. They'll pull, the horse will drop their head and they'll keep pulling. And then of course the horse has no idea what it's done because there's been no re release or reward and they become very heavy off the aids. So here, I'll show you how quick I release. I close my fist, I put the pressure, pressure, and then I've actually released there. So I released before he even moved his feet because I could feel or see his muscles starting to contract back as he was about to move. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a turn on the forehand so the hindquarters should pivot around the forehand. My cue for this is I hold my hand like this. This rope sits like so. I do not pull his head around. I just lift my hand like this. This is the cue for the turn on the hindquarters or the cue I use. Then I'm just going to rub on him until I get behind his shoulder. I'm going to step out a little bit and I'm going to direct my energy at his hip like this. So he's done it and normally I would reward and say good boy but I just want to show you guys where I'm directing. So this hand comes up, this hand directs straight into his stifle hip flank area. Good and then as he's moved the hind cause my energy comes back down to zero. So one would be one, two, three, beautiful. I got to a three. Now, if I get this correct and he starts to get the idea of it, over time he's going to start to react off these smaller numbers. So I'm going to say one, two. So he went off two. Good. Now I'm very happy with that. One is them would have to be extremely light and well trained. Uh, for the most part, he's actually been great today. When he first arrived, he was very bolshy and heavy and had a little bit of ADHD, couldn't stand still. He was a stallion until a year ago, um, so he wouldn't have lost the tes testosterone out of his system until six months ago. And he's also that big, strong type that, in, especially in the paddock, um, can be quite bossy with other horses. And so he tries that with people. So come around here. I lift my hand. If he anticipates that I'm about to ask him something and he starts to move around, I'll just rub on him until he stops because I never want them to anticipate a cue because I might actually just be coming back here to do to touch his hip, etc. So if he moved around, I'll just rub. Wait till he relaxes. So here I'm behind the shoulder. I'm going to lift my hand. One, two, three, four, five. So I had to get to five before he registered something was getting asked. And that's probably because his attention's elsewhere. So I come here, I say one.
Perfect. And so what he does is he learns to be a very good listener because when he doesn't listen, that pressure starts to build up. And it also means that for the rest of his life, everything is so soft and easy. If I have a dull desensitized horse, not only do I have to drag them everywhere and push them everywhere and have them all over me, but it also means that when I'm on their backs, they're heavy in the mouth, they're heavy off the leg, and so they're a horse that constantly has to be nagged for the rest of their lives. So this foundational work becomes so important so that you've got control and you set your horse up for success so that the rest of their life it's easy and they're nice and light off those aids. So the next thing I'm going to do is the turn on the hindquarters. And basically what that's going to encompass is that I'm going to have one hand here on the shoulder. I'm going to be in front of the shoulder. And this hand here, same as uh, with the turn on the forehand, I'm going to push it into the buckle. So for the, in this case, I'm just going to put the rope over the neck so it's out of the way and hold the rope with this hand. I'm going to first flex him to the outside. He's already moved over. He's already done what I wanted. But that to break it down if needed, they first need to flex to the outside and then gently I'll start the pressure system on his shoulder. So I would say one would be me raising my hand out here, two, and he's already gone off two. So I wouldn't need to go any higher. And sometimes if I, let's say I did one, two, but his expression was kind of grumpy or annoyed or he was quite lethargic about his response I would go up another one until I got a nice positive expression but because his expression was so lovely that's great two three four so I got to about a five or a six there before he gave me the response and you I could see that he was about to move so my hand just started slow to say yep you're on the right path so here one oh, I've got my hand wrong one, I quite like that. So even though it was really slow and it wasn't super sharp, um, he was nice and light. So here, one, so I got to about a two or a three. I'm gonna go one more time, perfect. So there he went off the one. So as I drew my energy back, he anticipated what I was about to do and he made the movement before I actually had to ask him. Cool. So this time here, hand here on the shoulder. He's already flexed that way, so he's already started it. I'm gonna. He's just gone to move. So there I went to go to pressure two, and I felt him move. He didn't actually complete it, but I rewarded him for that because he started to anticipate. Two, three, four, five, six. He did it, but a little bit lackluster. So here, one, two. There, that was really nice. That was probably more of a three or a four. Good boy. So here, one. So there he did it off the two. So here, beautiful. So that was nice and light, good boy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to combine the, or the, a bunch of it together and I'm gonna show you a little bit of body control so that I have that nice personal space around me and he's never coming into it. What I don't want is a really stiff, rigid animal that pushes its forehand across you while you're walking or let's say I'm walking through a gate, they don't just keep walking on straight and you have to drag them back. When I, with my horses from a very early age, as I walk through the gate, I lift this hand, they move the hind quarter and they yield around the gate so then I can shut it. So I never have to be dragging them around. So I'm going to Ask him to walk by my shoulder. Yep. And just a little bit more positive walk. And basically at any stage, if I need to move somewhere, see how the hind quarter lagged? The shoulder lagged a little bit. Good. I want him to be, speed up, good boy. I want him to be listening and you need to move his body. Just want the height to move a little more. Good. So there his shoulder's lagging, so I'm just going to quietly... That was really nice. So there he's kept that personal bubble. Now he's closed the space again, so I'm going to send him out. Good. So let's say I want to walk here. 
see how I have to walk into him because he hasn't anticipated this so there I'm just going to put my hand on this show him what I needed he's still a bit heavy on it good here good that was so nice so we really yielded the hind quarter across there now let's say I'm coming across here beautiful so he moved out of the way so that I didn't have to walk into him so now I'll just do it on the other rein so I'm going to walk this way and we'll speed up so they're yeah, really nice so he just lagged a little bit so I'm going to walk the same way nice good and then good I'm going to get the hindquarters to move beautiful get the forehand to move speed up good job so he's got this very easily um, and this is a massive difference to how he began um, he was very very pushy and bolshy and wanted to go over the top of me but I love the fact that my pressure for the most part it's got a little bit heavy there good for the most part has stayed under three what I find is that if horses have been desensitized and they require more pressure um, it's a little bit tougher because you have to be a little bit bigger with them and in those cases if a horse is really dull and sometimes quite grumpy about being told what to do because they've been a little bit um, allowed to be quite heavy those horses generally gen, generally require um, a more professional trainer or really really correct timing because you don't want to add big pressure and miss your timing because it's very confusing for the horse so I'm going to finish on that as he's done a great job